Okay, hello everybody, and um, welcome to our Medusa Games playthrough and stream of uh, Nine World. Uh, me and my colleague Gemma will be showing you through how to play the game. We'll we'll be doing a game, um, and we're doing the two-player version of Nine World. Um, so as you can see, um, this game is based on Norse mythology. It's based on the nine worlds of Norse mythology. So you've got Asgard, Midgard, Nidavella, Vanaheim. Uh, which you might be familiar with from things like Thor and sort of other uh, pop culture like that. Um, so uh, how the game is played is each world has different powers. If you have five stones on a world, you will control that world and you will gain the power. The aim of the game is to control as many of the nine worlds as you possibly can and try and sort of spread the influence of your um and your power across the board as much as possible. Um, so uh, I have two different wor worlds. I have Vanaheim and I have Svartalheim. And uh, Gemma has Alfheim and Musselheim. Um, on our cards, it says the different abilities that these um, worlds give us uh, in the world powers phase at the end of the turn. So um, depending on the game, we have a different number of um, uh, we have a different number of actions, and each action is labelled on the card. So, in an action, you can move one stone from your reserve to your player card, move one of your own stones between adjacent worlds, move your avatar, which is uh, this thing that I'm shaking about right now, uh, to adjacent worlds. You can use one to move one stone from Helheim to your reserve. You just want to move one stone from your player card to the world your avatar is on. You can use two action points to move one stone from your player card to any world that your avatar is not present on. You can use two action points to move another player's avatar to an adjacent world. You can use two action points to move one opponent's stone between adjacent worlds. But if your own avatar is present, it's minus one action point, and if an opponent's avatar is present, it's plus one. So what that means is, say I was here, and uh, Gemma's redstone was there, I could move that easily for one to an adjacent world. Say we were both there, I could move it for two. And say Gemma was there and I wasn't, it would take me three action points to move it. So that basically makes it quite hard for you to move other people's stones across the world. Um, but if you think it's worth doing to build up your strategy, then you can do that. Um, you can also use three action points to banish an opponent's stone to Helheim. Um, if your own avatar is present, it's minus one action point, and if their avatar is present, it's plus one. So it can cost up to four to move a stone to Helheim. Uh, what Helheim does is mean uh, if the stone is in Helheim, um, when you are scoring up, you lose two victory points. Uh, the way you gain victory points, you get one point for each stone on your player card, one point for each world you have a stone on, two points for each stone anywhere in the nine worlds, three points for a world where you dispute control, five points for a world that you control, and minus two for each in Helheim. So if we were to score right now, uh, me and Gemma both control two worlds. However, um, look at Midgard right now. We'd both have one stone on it each. So that means we're disputing control. So the aim of the game really is to try and get as many of your stones across the world as possible. However, um, uh, each, to unlock the world power, you need five stones on a world. So right now, if you look at Midgard, I've got five of my own stones on that world. That would mean I would unlock the power of Midgard. However, if Gemma had a stone on there as well, and a green stone as well, there are clearly more than five stones on the world. What you need to do in that instance is go through a battle. So in player order, we would take turns to take off our stones until it goes down to five. There you see there are now five stones on the world. I would still be in power of that world, despite the fact Gemma has a stone on here, because it is five uh, stones on a world where you have the majority. It doesn't have to be five of your own stones. It can be five of any stones as long as you have the majority. And as I said, the battles mean that those stones go down to five. Um, 
so you can't exceed that number of stones. So um, each turn involves um, the action points phase and then the world powers phase. Um, and we go initially in player order of the number on the boards. So you can see I've got number two, then it will be Gemma with Alfheim number three. Then it will be me again with uh, Mus no, that will be Gemma again, sorry, with Musselheim number seven. And then it will be me again with Svartalheim at number eight. So right now there's uh, two players. So we're going to work out um, how many um, action points we both have. So um, it would be uh, seven. Yeah, it'll be seven at the moment because we're in, uh, in, in both in, in charge of our, our home worlds. Um, mm -hmm. If you would lose the power of your home world, then um, you get one less action point um, at the start of your turn. Yep, so I'm going to start out. So I have seven action points to move stones from my card onto the board, move my avatar about. But initially in the game, it's, uh, it's better if you sort of set up things. So I'll go one, two, three. So I've moved it from my stone onto the... Uh, move the stone onto my card, then onto the board. Uh, four, five, six, and seven. So as I said before, now I have seven stones on uh, that world. So I would have Vanaheim's power at the end of the turn. Vanaheim's power is retrieved, so I can return one stone from Helheim to any world. Uh, there's no stones in Helheim at the minute, so I can move two stones from my reserve to my player card. So the reserve are the little bags you have uh, on the table. So now it's Gemma's turn to uh, control with Alfheim. Yep, so uh, I'm going to follow a similar tactic uh, in terms of a setup because I um, for some of my strategies because I, re I really want to make sure I, I keep control of, of my home world. And uh, in this first go, because you need five, um, I need to put all of them in there um, to, to get the power um, for this round. So with my action points, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, oh, I can't pick it up. <laughs> I'll just get some. There we go. Um, seven there. Um, and this one was already on there um, from before. So. Oh, wait, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So Gemma's just uh, done Alfheim, and now she has uh, Musselheim. So it's her turn again. And she, again, has seven action points. Yep, so um, I'll follow a similar path. Um, so one, two, three, um, four, five, six, seven. There we go. And as you can see there, Gemma's building up quite an interesting strategy. So she's uh, sort of loaded up Alfheim with her stones to try and take control of that. But she's also using the stones from Musselheim to sort of spread her influence across the world and, and try and take over um, Jotunheim. Um, this is part of what makes the game so interesting in terms of strategy. Because you might start out on, for example, Asgard, which means you can protect your own stones. But you might try and um, get to sort of Midgard or Nidiavella, so you can sort of swap stones across the board. So Gemma's sort of looking at Jotunheim right now. Uh, is that your turn complete, Gemma? It is. Um, that, that, so it's your turn um, for your second world. Okay, so I have seven uh, with Svartalheim. So I'm going to go one. And then I think I'll do a similar thing to Gemma. So um, go two, three. Here we go. Four, five, six, move it onto my card, and then seven, move it onto Gemma's wall. So, what I've done there is um, started to dispute control on Gemma's world. That means she has one less action point to use with uh, Musselheim in the next turn because my avatar is acting as a tiebreaker. Okay then, so um, that is the uh, action points phase completed. So now we go on to the world powers phase. So we look at all of the world, see if 
any of them have five stones on them. Uh, two do, so it's Vanaheim and Alfheim. So, um, Vanaheim's power, as I uh, said before, return one stone from Helheim to any world, no stones are on Helheim, or move two stones from your reserve onto your player card. So that basically gives me a little advantage for next turn, so I don't have to use any action points. And then uh, Gemma's got Alfheim, so do you want to talk through the power of Alf Alfheim? Yep, so with Alfheim, um, it's a power to move, so I can move one stone to any adjacent world, and this power may be used twice. Um, so I'm going to move um, James's stone off of my world. Um, I'll move it into uh, this adjacent world here, um, which will give me power back again over um, my world. Um, so that's one of my moves, and then I can move another, um, and I am going to move one of my own um, and then that way it's spreading my power a little bit further for future rounds okay uh, thank you Gemma and it's worth saying um, when your stones are moved on the world powers phase so say if Gemma was in control of Midgard then I stopped her controlling Midgard she would still have that world power in the world powers phase even if it goes less than five in the world powers phase as long as you started the world powers phase with it that means you um, can use the power regardless of what happens. It uh, only affects it later on if you've not changed anything. Okay, so uh, we've just done the um, uh, the world powers phase. So that means it's uh, the turn end because we don't score up until the third round. So if you want to uh, move the sort of grey bob, so we're on to the second round. And now we determine player order. So player order is determined by how many stones we each have on the board. I have five blue stones on the board. Um, and I have three orange stones on the board. Yep, I have five green um, and four red. Okay, so um, because me and Gemma are tied with the green and blue, it just goes in the numbers on the board again. So blue, then green, then red, then orange. So no actual change for now. Okay then, so I'm looking at the board after what's just happened at the World Powers phase, and I can see Gemma's being quite clever with sort of um, moving to different levels of the world. So what I'm going to do is try and mitigate her influence in a way, um, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, move it onto my card, five. Six, move it onto my card. And then I'm going to move the um, my blue avatar back. Actually, no, I'll move it onto Asgard. So then that's my turn completed uh, with Vanaheim. So now it's Gemma's turn with Alfheim. Cool, so with Alfheim, um, I'm going to move one onto my card two to put it in Alfheim, so that tops it back up to five, so that hopefully um, I'll still get to use the word power. Um, then my next move, so that's one, two, three, move avatar, four, five, six, seven. So that's um, that, that turn done. Um, but then player order has remained the same, so I move on to this go. Um, I think strategy wise, I'm going to stay away from Midgard um, as uh, also the placing of it is in the middle. So um, it's the easiest target um, for any of the other worlds. And I think James has started to establish himself there. Um, so I I'm going to avoid that battle because I'm trying to keep more stones on the board. Um, as you saw earlier, that can affect the player order in future turns. Um, so I'm going to try and regain power of my home world um, and but to be able to use the, the, world, the world power of it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, uh, now it's my turn for Svartalheim. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. Okay, so um, that is the action points turn completed. So now uh, we are going to do the world powers phase again. So we look at all of the worlds that have five stones on them. So Vanaheim again, Alfheim, um, Midgard, I have the majority in. Um, Nidivella, no. Uh, Musselheim, no. One off, yeah. Okay, so uh, now we're going to go through the world powers. So again, I've got Vanaheim. And again, there's no stones in a Helheim, so I'm just going to move two stones from my reserve onto my player card. Then it's uh, Alfheim. Yep, so again, it's the ability to move, move one stone to any adjacent world, and I can use it twice. Um, which means that I'm going to move these two back to Vanaheim. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned uh, previously, um, Despite the fact I'm like there's no there's less than five stones on Midgard, it doesn't mean that I've lost control for the world powers phase. However, if it was the same on the next world powers phase, I wouldn't be able to use Midgard. Okay, um, so now it's Midgard, so I get to swap one of my stones with any adjacent stone. So I think I will go here. Okay. And then it's um, the end of the World Powers phase, because it was only those three. Yep. Okay, then. So now, again, we determine player order. We're on round three, which is a scoring round. So um, I mentioned briefly before the victory points, but I'll just go over them uh, again. So you get one point for each stone on your player card, one point for each world you have a stone on, two points for each stone anywhere in the nine worlds, three points for a world where you dispute control, Five points for a world where you control, and minus two for each in Helheim. The difficulty is that the uh, scoring phase is completed after the world powers. So you might think of a really, really good strategy during the action points phase, but then at the end of that, it's sort of been thrown off by the other players. So you've got to work out, you know, how can I be clever and mitigate any sort of disasters that may, uh, that may arise with anything that I'm doing. Okay, so now we work out um, the player order. So... Uh, Blue I has have... one. Oops, sorry, gone. Oh no! You, I was just saying. Um, I've got eight and seven. Okay. I uh, have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Blue, and then one, two, three, four, five. Orange. So it's the same player order again. Yeah. Okay then. Um. So I have my seven moves. So I'm going to go. One. Oops. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. So that means I, um, at the end of this turn, will be in control of Asgard. Now, Asgard, I will just briefly say, is quite an interesting world power because if you use the power of Asgard, you have a choice. You can use it, and that means no other player can affect your stones during the world powers phase. However, if I did choose to use Asgard, then I couldn't use the power of Vanaheim or Midgard or wherever else I had. It would um, have to only be Asgard. So you can't get affected by anyone else. However, no one else can affect you. So you've really got to work out wh what's best for you. I think I might be using it in this turn if I have it by the end, just because it is a scoring phase. So uh, now it's Gemma's turn with uh, her green token. Yep, um, and now that I can see that he's... he's um could potentially use the power of Asgard, that's also going to influence my strategy, um, because um, even if I did have the power of Alfheim, um, which allows me to move stones, um, if he does use, choose to use that power, I won't be able to move them. Um, so I am going to focus on another world, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, um, now I have the choice to maybe add in an extra one, which um, is not useful unless I'm attacked. But if I feel like James might try to um, take this world from me, I could add more in if I want to. Um, but I don't, I don't think he will. So I think it's safe to move into um, this world. 
and try and do some more there. So that's five, six, seven. Uh, that's the end of that turn. Um, so now over to this one. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um, okay, thanks Gemma. So um, I'm now going to look at the board and I see, okay, it's a scoring phase. So Gemma will be gaining quite a few points just for this one stone off, uh, Niffle Hot. So what I'm going to do is go one, and that shows you the advantage of going later on in the game, because I've sort of thrown off that strategy. Then I'll go two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, um, because there are more than five, despite the fact they're all the same colour, there will still be a dispute on this turn. So we've just completed the action phase. So now it's the world powers phase. So I get to choose whether or not I'm going to use Asgard, um, which means that no one can... Oh, sorry. Um, first of all, we'll do the battles. Yep. So we'll go through. So uh, no disputes on these. And then you've got to Alfheim, where there are seven. So uh, Gemma would take off two of those stones. And they go into her reserve. Um, no dispute on Midgard, Musselheim, uh, there's six stones, so just one of those would go off. Uh, so it's a new reserve. And then um, that, those are the only disputed ones. So uh, I'm going to use the power of Asgard, so no one can affect my stones this turn. Uh, so then it skips Vanaheim because I'm using Asgard. Then it's Alfheim. Okay, so I have the yeah the power to move again. Um, so I can only move my own stones um, because of the power of Asgard. Um, and because it's a scoring round, um, I'm going to move um, these uh, uh, so what, to a different world because that's going to score me more points just from being present in another world. Um, so I'm going to move those two. And that's the end of my... My power for that one. Okay, um, so Midgard isn't taken, um, so then Musselheim. Um, yep, so that's the power to destroy. I can return one stone to the only player's reserve or two to their card. Um, I, can, I can't do anything with that really because I can't touch Jane's stones because of the power of Asgard on, on that one. Um, but I could mm -hmm. do something to your to the orange ones yep um which means i am going to remove this one okay um okay so uh is that the end of the world pass phase yep okay then so um now we do the scoring so uh, I'll start us off. So I get one point for each stone on your player guard. Well, I don't have any on my player guard. One point for each world you have a stone on. So one, two, three, four. So that's four points for me. Um, so I'll move the orange one there. Okay, um, two points for each stone anywhere in the nine worlds. So we'll go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 6, 8, 32. So that puts me on 236. Yep. Um, okay, and then uh, three points for a world where I dispute control. I don't think there are any disputed worlds uh so five points for a world i control one two three so there are three worlds i control so that gives me 15 extra points so that puts me on to uh, 51 
and then um, minus two for any in Helheim, and they're on not in Helheim. So it's Gemma's turn to score up. Yep. So um, I'm gonna uh, st- score Alfheim to start off with. Um, so one point for each stone in your player card. So I don't have any at the moment. One point for each world you have a stone on. So this was where uh, I started to use my world power phase as a good strategy to to spread myself out as much as I can because I'm now on one, two, three, four, five different worlds. So that gets me five points. Um, then I have two stones for each stone anywhere in the nine worlds. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Um, then I don't think there are any disputes. So I don't, uh, yeah, no. Um, so then five points for each world you control. Um, and that's only one of them, which puts me on 28 points. Um, I'm just gonna move that out of the way. <laughs> And pop that there. Okay. Um, then shall I, I'll, I should probably s- score my next one um, if we go in player order. Um, so I have one point for um, the stone on my reserve. Um, I am on three different worlds, so I'll get three points um, for that. Um, two for each stone on the world, so two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, it's eighteen again. Um, there aren't any disputes, and I control two worlds this time. Um, have those two there. That's plus ten, which puts me on thirty-two. Mm-hmm. You just want to use um, the same coloured st- uh, stone to score up, just to make it a bit easier. Oh yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um, so that other one's on twenty-eight, isn't it? So I'll put my if I use I'll use the red one, and I'll go on. Mm-hmm. 16. Okay, then. so as you can see, Gem has built up quite a good strategy because she's sort of spreading across the board, trying to get as many points as possible that way. Um, whereas, you know, the, the one I've employed hasn't got me as many points as that. So uh, there's lo- lots of different ways to play. Uh, so now we're on to the round four, and it isn't a scoring phase. So uh, we might be more happy to take risks on this phase. So I'm going to look across the board and see how many stones um, I have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 blue stones. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just 5 orange stones. Cool. I have 9 green and uh, 9 red. Okay, so it uh, stays in the same play order it was before. So now um, I'm going to uh, start off my turn. So I have seven moves to do um, whatever I like. Okay then. Um, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Okay, so now it's your turn, Gemma. Okay, um, so James went for a very uh, attack method, um, and that is my home world. So um, on my go, I will do my best to reclaim that. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then I'll do my next turn. Um, so that has five in, so that's okay. Um, I'm going to go one, two, three. Um, ooh, um, Oh, choices. Um, four. Uh, whoops. Um, five. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Just appeared too. Five. Um, six, and then seven. There we go. Okay. Um. So now it's my turn with my orange. So I'm gonna be really cruel. 
go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can <laughs> see that was a very, very mean round. Um, but that just shows the different sort of ways to play. So as Gemma mentioned, I'm playing like more of an attacking one. That isn't always good, especially if you've got two players, because um, the player you've just sort of messed their strategy up with, they're probably going to go on the attack for you soon or try and sort of mess up your strategy. So you've really got to think ahead of the game. Okay, so uh, now we do the battles phase. So um, we look at Asgard. Um, I take off one stone. Um, and now it's down to five. So then it's Vanaheim. So again, I take off one stone because it goes in player order, and now we're down to five. So now it's uh, Alfheim. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'll take off mine first, the one blue stone on there. <laughs> and then I'll just take off many, many green <laughs> um, until it's down to five. Okay. Um. Um, and then the only other one um, is here. So I'll take off my green. Yep. And it's about down to five. Okay then, so we go through the world powers. Um, I'm not going to use Asgard this turn, so I'm going to use Vanaheim. Um, so I can retrieve one stone from Helheim or two stones from my reserves on my player card. I'm going to put two stones from my reserve onto my player card. And now it's Alfheim. Yep, so my power to move. Um, Asgard hasn't been used, so I can move anyone else's. Um, therefore, um, I'm going to move this one. And okay. This one. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so now it's uh, Musselheim. So that means Gemma can return one stone to an owning player's reserve or two to their card. I'm going to remove um, this one to their reserve. Okay, and then it's Fartelheim. So I can spend two bonus action points immediately. So I'm going to go one, two. Okay, um, so that's the end of the world powers phase. So now it's round five. So now we've got to work out um, the player order. Um, I control two worlds with blue. Um, so that puts me ahead because you only control uh, a form of green. Oh, no, sorry, you've got two with red, so um, I'm in control of two different worlds, then you, so then we count stones, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I think you have more red stones on the board. Um, yeah, I have six green, and then um, 11, 12 red. Okay, so red first, then blue, then green, then orange. So now Gemma's going first. Yep. Um, so with my seven action points, um, so there is also that I see as a yes disadvantage to going first, um, because uh, I don't know whether my strategy is going to stay the same after everyone else has done theirs. Um, so I'm going to go for um, over here. So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Uh, and then it's your turn with green. Yep, so um, with green, uh, I'm going to go one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then I'm going to go orange one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now we do the dispute phase. So, Asgard, um, I need to take one off. Uh, Vanaheim has five, Alfheim has five. I don't think there's any more disputed worlds. Oh, oh no, there's Midgard. a dispute of, the, of itself, so this will... Yep. Oh. Hang okay, on. then. Yep. Yep, so uh, we're down to five on all of the worlds. So, um, I'm not going to use Asgard uh, this turn again, so I'm going to use Vanaheim and put two onto my reserve. So then it's Alfheim. Alfheim, so I can move two, um, and Asgard isn't in use, so I can move any that I want. Um, so I'm going to move um, this one to here, and this one to Okay, um, so no, then Midgard, Midgard next, yep, so you can exchange one of your uh, own stones with any other stone, um, so I'm going to exchange um, this. Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, Musselheim. Um, yeah, so that's hard to destroy. So I'm then going to destroy this orange one. Okay. Um, and then I did start off the world power phase with Fartelheim. So that means I can um, spend two bonus action points immediately. So I'm going to go um, one, two. Um, despite the fact I've done that, obviously I didn't start the world power phase with uh, Niflheim, so I don't get to use that world power right now. Okay, so uh, now we're on to round six, which is another scoring round, and we determine player order by looking at the amount of worlds we control. So um, blue is in control of two, red is in control of three, so red goes first, um, green has two as well, so how many stones do you have on the board with green? So one, two, three. Uh, nine. So I have eight. Okay, so it's uh, red, then green, then blue. Uh, one, two, three. Yep, okay. So Gemma now has the first two moves of this turn. And as we said, that does put her at a bit of a disadvantage. So um, we'll have to see um, what strategy she uses to try and like mitigate that. Yep, so I'm going to go for... One. Um, two. Um, how on earth? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then it shall turn with the green. Yep, so my next tactic is going to be one, two, three, four, um, five, six, um, Seven. Okay. So now I'm looking at the board and I'm thinking this is a scoring phase and Gemma's doing really well. What is the best way I can try and sort of stop that to try and make her not be as far ahead? So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Five, 
six, seven. And then I have my orange turn immediately after. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I have an extra move, so I'll just put a stone onto my card to get a point. So now we do this dispute phase. Um, I think Alfheim and Jotunheim are both disputed, as well as Midgard. Uh, yep, so um, this just means I have to remove one of my own. Um, and the same with Midgard. So as you can see, I've sort of worked out that because this is a scoring phase, I sort of want to get as many of Gemma's stones off the board as I possibly can, um, because she is doing quite well with sort of her strategy of trying to take over as many worlds as she can. Whereas like before I was going more on the attack and we've seen that hasn't worked quite as well. But sometimes it might work better. It, it really depends on the game and who you're playing with, which is what, what's really, really good about Nine Worlds, how adaptable it is. So uh, we're going to do the world powers phase, and I think I'm not going to use Asgard this turn. Um, so we go to Vanaheim. So I'm going to put two stones onto my uh, card, which basically I'm just doing because that will give me two victory points because we are on the scoring round. Uh, and now we're on Alfheim. Uh, yep, so I get my power to move, and I can do this twice. And because it's a scoring round, I'm going to move... Um, I'm basically trying to spread mine um, because I'll get points for being in different worlds. Okay, um, and then it's Jotunheim. Yep, so Jotunheim has um, the power to steal, so return one stone to your own player's card and replace it with one of your own from your player card reserve. Um, so I'm going to. Um, hmm, I'm going to pop this one back here and okay. take one of my own there instead. Okay then, uh, so now we're, we've are we got Midgard, so um, exchange one of your stones for any other stone. So I think I will go ahead and swap with those two. Um, and then uh, we started the turn with Nidia Vela, didn't we? Or did we not? Um, yes. Yes, you did. Okay. Um, so that has the power to add one stone to any world. So, um, I will add my stone to, um, I'm going to go for, uh, this one. Okay. Um, so it's quite an interesting situation where we've got all the world powers activated. Uh, so next you've got Musselheim. Yep, so that's the power to destroy. Um, so I am going to destroy this one. Okay. Right. Um, I now have Svartelheim. So that means I can spend two bonus action points immediately. So I'm going to go one two and then i have niflheim so i can banish one stone to helheim i'm trying to work out what the best way to mitigate as many points is i think if i take this one off and banish it to helheim that will lose Gemma the most points okay so um now we do scoring so um one point for each stone on my player card while i have one two three four five on my player card at one point for each world you have a stone on so one two three four five so that takes me up to 10 so that puts me on 61 um two points for each stone anywhere in the nine worlds so i've got two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen 20, 22, 4, 6, 8, 30, 2, 4, 6, 8. So 38, 
add 61 um, is 90, oh, 99, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so I'm on 99. And then um, three points for any worlds I dispute control. I don't think there are any disputed worlds right now. Nope. Okay. Um, five for any worlds I control. Five, 10, 15, 20. So that will put me on 119. And then I don't have any stones in Helheim. So now it's Gemma's turn to score up. Yep, so scoring for red, so I get I have one point um for the uh, the stone that's on my player card. Um a world for each um so a point for each stone that I have um each world that I have a stone on. <laughs> get my words <laughs> order. Um which is five. Um then two points for each stone I have on the board, which is thirty two, and then I have um but yeah, no disputed worlds, but um, five points each world I control, which is uh, three. That's another 15, which is 53 points. Um, what am I on now? I'm on 60, so that would be 113. Goes there. Um, now for green, um, I have two points for the ones on my, on my card. One point for each soon, I have a world in. Oh, oh my god, I just keep spinnerizing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, two, three, so that's four. Um, and then two points for each stone, so um, that's 10, uh, 12, 14, 16, um, 18, 20. Um, no disputed worlds again, and plus five for uh, each world I can control, which is only, uh, oh, no, it's two of them. Um, because I've got three in that world there, which is plus 10, um, which takes me to 36. Um, so that means I'm on 49. Yes, so you are going quite far ahead, actually. There so Gemma's managed to do really well utilising the strategy of the world she's got to sort of go so far ahead. Um, which is like really really interesting uh, way to play I think um, and um, just to sort of briefly mention it before we go into the next turn on the bottom of uh, all of the player cards uh, if we were to flip them over I'll just quickly do that uh, with this one um, this you might be able to see there's some text on the bottom so um, this one says, like, when your stones return from Valhalla, you may choose to elect to add them to the world your avatar is on or your own home world. So um, another way to play this game is to add an extra bit of strategy is um, once you've played a few times, you can sort of flip the player cards over um, and they each have a different advantage to them. And that could be a nice way to sort of work out, um, you know, if you if you're feeling quite confident with the game, how to sort of add a different layer of strategy, how to sort of change it for yourself, um, and also there are some sort of preset versions of the game in the rulebook. So um, we're playing like a recommended way to sort of start off the game um, with our world sort of facing each other across from the board. But when you become more confident, it's like easier to build up your own strategy using different worlds. So. Um, now we've scored up. It's on to round seven. So Just we're gonna... to you know, there's also the uh, minus two for this one in Helheim that I. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just remove that from from Helheim, back to here, and then I'll minus two points. Okay. Um. So now we do the um. So now we're working out player order. So uh, blue I control two worlds, and orange I control two worlds as well. Yep, so red says in, uh, first uh, because it's got um, three was that it controls and green also has two. Um, so then it goes to stones on the board. So I have blue uh, eight stones on the board. Uh, green has nine. Oh, no, ten. 
Um, and orange has 10 as well, so I think it stays. Or blue and orange swap. Yeah. Okay, so again, Gemma's going first, Toys. Yeah, um, so. Um, I'm going to go. One. Uh, two. Um, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's it. Uh, that one done. Then okay. for green, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Um, six, seven. Okay then. Um, so I'm going to start off by going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. Oh, I've realized I've done that in the uh, wrong order, but it would have been the same turn anyway. Apologies for that. Um, it would have been blue, then orange, then blue, but I did it blue, then orange, but it would have been the same turn anyway. Yeah. Okay, um, so now we do the dispute phase, so I think Midgard's looking <laughs> very, very cluttered right now. Yep, um, uh, I see a, a very wise tactic that James has been using throughout the game, um, which yeah involves moving my stones so that it's kind of self-destruction, because I have to now remove, remove these. Um, so it goes red, then green, then red. Right down until we have five. There we go. Um, and then there's another dispute um, over here. Mm -hmm. So I think that's down to five. One, two, three, four. Oh, wait, one more. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm off. Okay. Um, and then. Uh, Niflheim, so it will be uh, red first, and then green, and then orange. Okay, um, so I am uh, going to use... Actually, no, I'm not going to use Asgard this turn. I will use Vanaheim again, so I'm going to put two stones onto my player card. Um, and then it's Alfheim. Alfheim, power to move two, uh, means I'm going to move that one and that one. So uh, if you're just joining us briefly, just a quick introduction. This is uh, Medusa Games, Nine World, based on uh, Norse mythology. And uh, Gemma and I are just sort of going through um, a full game. Um, it's a nice strategy game uh, for two to six players, uh, ages 12 plus, um, and you're trying to control as many of these different worlds as possible, using as many stones on the board as you can. Yep. Okay. Um, so, uh, the next power will be for Midgard, which is the power to exchange, um, which... I will do with um, <laughs> that one. Okay. Um, no Nidivella, right? Um, it? Oh, it yeah, is, yeah. There is, there is, yeah. Um, power to add one stone. Um, so, I'm going to add that stone to... Um, Hmm. 
going to add it to this one. Okay. Um, so then, then Muscle yep. Power to destroy. Um, so we're going to destroy this one. Okay. Um, I have Svarselheim. So that gives me the power to spend two bonus action points immediately. So I'm going to go one, two. Oops. <laughs> there it goes. And then I did have uh, Nifaheim at the beginning of this turn, um, but that's really, really not gone well for me. Um, so I am going to try to think which the best stone to destroy would be. I'll go for this one. So that's in Helheim. Okay, so now we're on to round eight. So we have two more rounds to go. So now we're looking at um, player order. So blue is in control of two worlds, and orange is only control of one world. Red has three. three. Green has two. So how many stones does green have? Uh, green has ten. So uh, five, ten. Blue has ten as well. So it goes uh, red, blue, green, and then orange, because green and blue both have the same number of stones. Um, so then we go in the numbers on the board. So it's red to start us off. Yep, so um, we're going to go with uh, so one, two, three, four. OK. Um, Five, six, seven. Okay then. Um, so I've got blue. So um, one. Actually, no. I'll keep that on there for now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. And then it's green. I might live to regret that one. Well, I see a similar tactic happening again. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm, I am going to... Um, well, first of all, I'm going to spend two to put this here. So one, two. Mm. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um, and now it's Orange's turn. So I'm going to go one. It would be two action points to move Gemma from there. So I think I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now we go on to the dispute phase. So uh, Asgard, Vanaheim, Alfheim are all fine. We get to Jotunheim, um, and oh no, we do have five on there. Uh, ignore me. So Midgard has again <laughs> been completely bit covered bit. in red. <laughs> so I'll just remove some of those. <laughs> and so we're back down to five. Okay. Um, and also, uh, Svartelheim, um, four, five. so Gemma has to take off one green from there. Yeah. Okay, um, so let's go through the world powers. I'm not using Asgard this turn. So Vanaheim, I get two on my card, and quite a lot on my card at the minute. Uh, then it's Alfheim. Yeah, Alfheim, power to move two, um... Can be used twice, so I am going to move. Um, hmm. 
This one and this one. Okay. Um, so now we're on to Jotunheim. So I have that power. So that means I can return one stone to an owning player's card and replace it with uh, one from my player card or reserve. So I'm trying to think where would be the most advantageous for me to do this. Um, I think if I go put this one back and then replace it with one of my own. Okay, and then it's Midgard. Midgard, so power to exchange one of your own stones with any other stone. Um, which means I am going to exchange um, this one with one of mine. Okay, and then it's Nidia Vela. Uh, yep, so that has power to add one stone. So we shall add a stone to here. Okay, um, and then I did have Nidivella, uh, not Nidivella, sorry, Svartalheim. So I'm going to spend my two bonus action points immediately, um, and I will go one, and then put one on my card. Um, and then I've got Niflheim as well, so I can banish a stone to Helheim. So, sorry Gemma, I'm going to put another one of the your green stones in a Helheim. Okay then, so uh, that's our world powers phase completed. So now we're on to the final round of the game, which is also obviously the final scoring round. So Gemma might be looking at um, those two stones in Helheim right now and think, okay, I don't particularly want those to um, be in Helheim by the end of the game. Um, so it does take one stone, uh, one move to move your stones from Helheim into your reserve. So that's why it's quite an interesting dynamic created, um, because you're trying to work out, well, you know, would my time um, action point be better spent actually doing something, or should I move it out of Helheim just to try and salvage as many points as I can? Okay, so we're going to work out uh, player order. So blue is in control of two worlds. Orange is in control of three worlds. Yep, green is in charge of two, um, and red is in charge of two. Okay, so we orange first, and then work out how many stones we've got. So five, ten, eleven blue stones. Uh, eleven green. So and it would be blue then green. Here. So it goes... An 11 red. Okay, so orange, blue, uh, green, red. So yeah, it's quite interesting how like now it's the opposite way around what it's been for most of the game. Yeah, so um, it really shows how if you are sort of coming in last, you can try and salvage it a fair amount. So it's orange for me to start off with. So I think I'm going to go... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. So now it's me again with blue. So I'm going to go one, two. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um, three. Actually, four, five, six, seven. Oops. Don't know where those two stones just disappeared to. <laughs> Back. Oh, there's one. Okay. Okay, so that's my um, two turns done. So now it's Gemma with green and then red. Yep, so um, I'm going to go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for green. Okay. And now for my red turn, I'm going to go one, two, three, 
four, five. Um, Okay then, so now we are doing the dispute phase, so um, no, Asgard isn't disputed, Vanaheim actually is, so that one just goes into my reserve, uh, Alf, uh, Alfheim isn't, uh, Jotunheim isn't either, Midgard oh, Alf again. Alfheim has got, yeah, so oh, blue one comes off. off. Okay, um, um, and then Midgard, I take the orange off first. <laughs> And I shall remove my many red again. <laughs> it's a very good tactic. Uh, oh no, okay, so that's five now. Um, okay. Um, then, uh, yeah, Vella. so a blue one comes off, mm -hmm. that one. So it's not gone very well for me at all. Um, and then it's um, Musselheim, so I take off an orange first. And then a red, and that's down to five. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Svartalheim is a mess, so <laughs> I'm going to take off blue first. Uh, I'll be orange first. Oh, orange yeah. first, even. So or yeah. Orange and then blue, uh, and then green. So the words do I take it off? Uh, and Did then... you just take one of the orange ones off as well? Or... I just took the green. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'll take that off. Orange. Okay. Um, and so then I need to take off blue. blue, yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, so... Yep. Okay then, so we'll do the world powers. I am going to activate Asgard this turn, so I can't Oh wait, use any of them. this one as well. Sorry, yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, I'm going to use Asgard this turn, so I can't be affected. Um, Wise move for so, the last round. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then, uh, Gemma, you can do your world powers. Cool. Um, so... Starting off with um, Alfheim, the power to move two, so I can only move mine or orange. Um, so I am going to move mine um, just so that I can get myself into multiple worlds to get more points. Um, so that's that power done. Um, then uh, you can use orange, so you can you now get to use Jotun Time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I am going to uh, s return one stone to the owning player's card, place it with one of your own from your card or reserve. I'm trying to work out where would be best to do that to try and uh, mitigate Gemma's advantage. I think it will be probably mid guard, so then I'll move one from my card onto there. Okay, so now it's Midgard. Yeah, Midgard, so it's part of exchange. So I'm <laughs> going to Pretty exchange. Uh, I think I'm going to exchange this one. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Nidavella. Um, so that's to add a stone um, to any, any world. So I'm going to add one to here. Okay. Um... Um, and then it's uh, Musselheim. So power to destroy. Um, so I'm going to destroy this orange one here. Okay then. Um, and then it's Fartelheim. Um, did which did that, that have the world a... power at the end? Yeah, yeah, I did. So uh, it's power to spend two bonus action points immediately. Uh, and that's green. So. I think green is going to um, move one there and one there. Okay, and then I finally get to banish a stone to Helheim, so I'm going to banish this one to Helheim. So now we score up the final round, so we'll see what this is looking like. So one point for each stone on my player card, so I have four for that. So add four to my score, which puts me on 123. Um, and then um, one point for each world I have a stone on. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So 
gives me six points. That was me on 129. Um, okay, then it's two points for each stone anywhere in the nine worlds. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, two, four, six, eight, thirty, two, four, six, eight, forty. So that puts me on to uh, 60, 169. Um, okay, and then five points, three points for a world where control is disputed. I don't think there are any disputed worlds. Um, so five points for each of the worlds I control. So five, 10, 15, 20. So that will put me on um, eight, 189. And I don't have any stones in Helheim. Cool. Okay. So for um, Alfheim, um, it's uh, I get one point for the the stone on my on my card, um, a point for each world that I'm in. So I'm actually in six worlds. I got quite far <laughs> um, in spreading myself. <laughs> um, two points for every stone on the board, which I think is twenty four points. I think, uh, mm. and then uh, for each world I control is another five points, and that's three worlds so that's plus 15 which is 46 um so if i'm on 46 now uh that puts me on 93 which is over here yep um then for red on any on my um card uh i am in one two three four five different worlds um Two points for each stone I have on the board, which I think is also 24. Um, no disputed worlds, and five points for each world that I control, which is two of them, which is plus 10, which is on 39. Um, if I'm on 93 right now, it puts me on 32, which is here. Okay, so. Um... Was that, sorry, was that the world you control? Yeah. Okay, and then uh, is it minus three for the ones you have for um, the one? Or minus, so it's minus two, so minus it'd be two one. six. Minus six for me. Um, so that puts me on, where is it, 126? Yeah. Okay, um, so Gemma's uh, won that game. And as you can see, she thought of a really, really interesting strategy, which really put her in a good advantage. And that's really the beauty of Nine World. Um, it's a fantastic strategy game where you sort of build up with the a way you want to play. And then as you become more confident, obviously I've said the different uh, player cards can give you different advantages. Uh, we'll be running demos of this throughout the weekend. So if you want to pop up on the Discord at any point, please feel free to let any of us know. Uh, if you just want to talk through anything, ask a couple of questions, or try any of our other games, we'd be more than happy to help you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this will be recorded, so if you do want to watch it at any point over the weekend, um, or over the next few days, if you missed anything, or if you are more interested in different parts of the game, you can watch it at any time. And like I said before, please feel free to pop up to say hello to us on Discord. We're more than happy to play through a game. We have Nine Worlds as well as Great Fire of London with the new two-player edition. And we are also um, showing uh, Magnificent Flying Machines. Uh, and there is also a video of Tinker Tailor that you can watch if you're interested in any of the games. Uh, I'm going to say thank you. And uh, is there anything you'd like to add, Gemma? Uh, no, uh, just uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to look forward to hearing from you over the weekend. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll see you at some point. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.